Here, let me help. White or dark? A uh, little of both on this for Mrs. Atwater. What about you? I don't eat it. How queer. I never heard of anyone who didn't eat chicken. Did you, Brandon? Oh, you probably did. Why don't you eat it, Philip? I just don't. Well, now, there must be a reason. Freud says there's a reason for everything. Even me. There's no reason, Janet. Well, as I remember, Philip, you have a very funny reason. Doesn't he, Brandon? Uh, yes. No, I knew there had to be one. Now, what is it? Oh, yeah. it's nothing too much. Well, I think it's quite fascinating. Come on, Brandon, please. Well, it, it happened about three years ago in Connecticut. Uh, Mother has a place there, you know. Uh, we were going to have chickens, so we, we walked over to the farm. It was a lovely Sunday morning in late spring. Across the valley, the church bells were ringing. And in the yard, Philip was doing likewise to the necks of two or three chickens. Oh, dear. <laughs> it was a task he usually performed very competently. But on this particular morning, his touch was perhaps a, a trifle too delicate. Because one of the subjects for our dinner table suddenly rebelled. Like Lazarus, he rose... That's a lie! Philip! There's no word of truth in the whole story. I never strangled a chicken in my life. Now, look here, Philip. I never I... strangled a chicken, and you know it. <laughs> Forgive me, but it just seemed very funny, you two being so intense about an old dead chicken. <laughs> Sorry. We were ridiculous and very rude. I apologize for both of us and the story. Wow. Is it all over? I'm afraid so, Rupert. Oh, what a pity. In another moment, you might have been strangling each other instead of the chicken. Mr. Goodell, really? No, oh, but a man's honor was at stake. And personally, I think a chicken is as good a reason for murder as a blonde, a mattress full of dollar bills, or any of the customary unimaginative reasons. Well, now, you don't really approve of murder, Rupert, if I may. You may, and I do. Think of the problems it would solve. Unemployment, poverty, standing in line for theater tickets. I must say I've had a perfectly dreadful time getting tickets for that new musical. What's it called? You know. The something with what's-her-name, Jewel. And the victims, inferior beings whose lives are unimportant anyway. Obviously. Now, mind you, I don't hold with the extremists who feel that there should be open season for murder all year round. No. Personally, I would prefer to have Cut a throat week, oh. <laughs> or a strangulation day. Oh. Probably a symptom of approaching senility, but I must confess I really don't appreciate this morbid humor. Well, the humor was unintentional. But you're not serious about these theories. Of course he is. So you're both pulling my leg. No, why do you think that? Well, Brandon, the notion that murder is an art which a few superior beings should be allowed to practice. In season. <laughs> Now, I know you're not serious. But I am. I'm a very serious fellow. Then may I ask, who is to decide that a human being is inferior and is therefore a suitable victim for murder? The few who are privileged to commit murder. And just who might they be? Oh, myself. Philip. Possibly Rupert. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenneth. You're out. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm serious. So are we, Mr. Cantley. The few are those men of such intellectual and cultural superiority that they're above the traditional moral concepts. Good and evil, right and wrong, were invented for the ordinary average man, the inferior man, because he needs them. Then obviously you agree with Nietzsche and his theory of the Superman. Yes, I do. So did Hitler. Hitler was a, a paranoid savage. His supermen, all fascist supermen, were brainless murderers. I'd hang any who were left. But then you see, I'd hang them first for being stupid. I'd hang all incompetents and fools anyway. There are far too many in the world. Then perhaps you should hang me, Brandon, for I confess I'm so stupid I don't know whether you're all serious or not. But in any case, I'd rather not hear any more of your, forgive me, contempt for humanity and for the standards of a world that I believe is civilized. Civilized? Yes. Perhaps what is called civilization is hypocrisy. Perhaps. Well, I'm sure Rupert, fortunately, oh, now, gentlemen, has really, the intelligence I... and imagination Please, to... Please, Brandon, I think we've had just about enough. Philip, uh, where did you put those books you set out for Mr. Kentley? I'd very much like to see them myself, if I may. 